Hello, Tendies, Friendies. Welcome back to Tendies Club. Got a great show for you. The on balance volume shows how much volume there is behind buys and sells. So imagine there's an up day and there's a lot of volume. That shouldn't that have more? Uh, shouldn't that, shouldn't that have more weight than if like a month later the sh the shares go down by the same amount, but on like a no volume at all? Shouldn't that have more weight? Well, there's an indicator that shows that stuff called the on balance volume. So we'll look at the on balance volume. It, what it's showing is a bullish, a bullish divergence for the last three months in cassava. The price has been going down as the, uh, as the uh, on balance volume has been steadily rising. So people have been buying in volume as the shorts have been, the market makers have been uh, manipulating the share price down, it seems. We'll take a look at that. Well, it's a great day in the market, isn't it? So another great day in the market. We'll take a look at that. Cassava is up more than 5%. China uh, put a, may, have, uh, may have thwarted the shorts plans. People were planning on China uh, going a certain way as far as policy and destroying the for-profit educations and destroying real estate and coming down really hard on a lot of, uh, a lot of private industry. And now they said they're going to backstop the uh, the tech companies. And so that's going to be bad for the shorts. So this China's surging. The whole Chinese index, we'll take a look at that, is leading the market. We'll take a look at that. Uh, and also Anavex with the uh, the Denapazil-like comparison from yesterday. We'll take a look at that as well. Got some more info on that. Got some pushback, but then I have a little bit of pushback as well. So uh, not an investment advisor, not an investment advice, not a tax advisor, not tax advice. Tendies Club. Uh, please like and chat and comment and subscribe and let's do it. Please hit like, please hit the thumbs up. The algorithm likes like, let's do this thing. Uh, yeah, I don't have my, I'll do the, I'll do the set on the weekend. I've, I've had a bunch of stuff to do. I'm not, I didn't get dressed for the show, <laughs> but I got a good show though. Got a good show. Got a good show though. Okay. So China's up 15% leading the market. Holy cow. Immune bio, small Alzheimer's players up 9%. Roblox up almost 9%. GameStop meme stock up almost 8%. Cassava up more than 5%. There's Anavex up more than 5%. The Russell 2000, all the small caps up 4.77%. What a day. Tesla up 4.29%. Ethereum 3.7%. Salesforce 3.68%. A Novus 3.58, Bitcoin 3.58, uh, Inhibit Case is up 3.17%, Momentum is up 2.87%, Europe is up 2.84%, Large Biotech up 2.79%, AMC is up 2.83%. There's consumer discretionary. The consumer is rebounding. We're going to hear from the Fed later today, probably raising a quarter point, almost certainly. Consumer discretionary up 2.78%. The Qs, so all the large techs. NASDAQ Q's up 2.71%. The small biotechs, smaller biotechs up 2.74%. Alphabet up 2.65%. Financials up 2.57%. Australia up 2.34%. Amazon up 2.23%. What a day. Materials are up 1.98%. Apple's up 1.88%. The SPY is up 1.68%. All of Japan, 1.64%. They just had a 7.3 Richter earthquake up in Japan, wishing them well. Corporate bonds are up 1.34%. Value is up 0.9%. Cortex, small Alzheimer's player, up 0.97%. Real estate is up 0.87%. Pipelines up. 0.7%. Healthcare up 0.68%. EIG, favorite small financial, up 0.52%. Uh, where food come from, up 0.17%. Treasuries, long treasuries, up 0.14% uh, coming into the raise. Uh, consumer staples up barely 0.04%. Energy up barely 0.03%. Short treasuries down 0.11%. Some of the only stuff that's not working. Short treasuries. Gold is now, its run maybe over, is down 0.26%. Utilities having a bad day, 0.84%. Net list has started off poorly, 1.75% down. And Russia remains halted. With that, Tendies Friendies, let's go to the news. Let's go to the actual news stories. I will go back and get Sava back up there on a good day like this. Good day like this, 3671. Let's leave that in the corner and look at it. And let's look at the chart here. So check out this on balance volume. So like we said, on balance volume, on balance volume, if you uh, if there was a big volume day, like 8 million shares traded 
and the stock is up 10%, holy moly. And then on a real, real low volume day, like a quarter of a million shares traded, the stock is down 10% or down the same dollar amount, let's say. So forget the, the percentage amount will be different, but the amount of changes will be different, will be the same. So is, shouldn't that be, shouldn't you put more weight on the big volume days, whether up or down? Shouldn't the big volume days, because you could also manipulate a stock the other way, you could bid it up. Like, you know, in the after hours, you could bid it up with on like no volume, which does, shouldn't that really not count or something? So the on balance volume takes this into account. So let's take a look at that. On balance volume, so this is from uh, whatever, stockcharts.com. Uh, so, so to calculate on balance volume, so the absolute, the idea with, absolute, with on balance volume, the absolute number doesn't matter. It starts from arbitrary spot, so that, that doesn't matter. But if you look at the chart, whether it's going up or down can tell you things. Has there been more, uh, been more buying or more selling? Uh, volume wise, and you can compare that to the price movement. Okay, so to calculate the on balance, and then so then if the price is going one way, but the on balance volumes go on the other way, so it, it can it can show you like fakes. So there's uh, so in this case, what we're saying is there's a bullish divergence. There the stock price has been going down, but on the up days there's been a lot of volume, and on the down days there's not been as much volume. So it's been like a fake. It's been they've been manipulating the share price down when there's been a lot of volume to buy it up, and we know that they can print as many. How do they do that? When nobody's selling, they, they they can't do that, right? If nobody's selling the shares, they can't they can't uh, they, they they can't. If nobody's willing to uh, to to sell the shares, they can't do it. Well, they can print shares. If no one, uh, they can they can short as many as they want by printing them by creating phantom shares using options with a market maker exception. And we can talk more about that as well. And we will tomorrow. How about that? But so anyway, so that that's so that's the big idea is that it, it takes volume into account. I'm sorry, I'm not showing the share price here. It takes volume into account. So to calculate the on balance volume, you take today's on balance volume, and then uh, you add in uh, the, the yesterday's on balance volume or yesterday's plus today. So it's, it's, it's cumulative is the idea. And so you take if so when it's if the if the pre it's, it's the previous period plus the current period. So it's cumulative. So you look at the trend and not the absolute number. So if the if the close for the period is higher, so if the share price is up, then you add the volume. If the share price is down, then you subtract the volume, and that's it. So that, that's it's really basically really simple. If the share price is up, add the volume. If the share price is down, subtract the volume, and so that and that way you get a running total of uh, how of how much strength there is behind the buying and selling. Okay, so that so that's that's the uh, the the calculation there, and so let's look at the weekly first. Uh, I'll go to Mia. Okay, so this is the weekly. So down here is the share price. This is going back to tw 2020, beginning of 2020. So this is, we're down here at like $8, $2. And then we had a run way up to the hundreds, now into the 30s. And it's obviously exponential there. Or logarithmic, rather. This is obviously log logarithmic because these numbers get squinched up at the top. So anyway, logarithmic scales. Anyway, uh, okay, so that, that's just the share price. Fine. And then, and so, okay, and then over time, look at from beginning of 2020, over time, here's the on balance volume. It's been going up. Remember, it's the trend that matters. So it's been going up. That means there's been more volume behind the buying. Okay, fine. But now what we want to zero in on is look since December, the last three months right here. And I'm sorry, my, uh, I got I to gotta make, I got to move this. You can't see what I'm doing, but I got to move this here so I can. I can't now. I can't see something else, but don't matter. Now, now my now my arrow will be in the right place. Anyway, here is the uh, the the share price. Here, here's the on balance volume. So look at December. Since December, right here, there's been like maybe even November, there's been a, a dip right here. We'll see. We'll see when we close in. For the last three months, it's been all up on the on balance volume. All up on the on balance volume. So let's zero in on that on the daily chart. There it is. Gosh darn. Uh, 
Okay, so I'm gonna move this again. I hope you can see. Uh, let me move me. <laughs> I'll move me over here. All right, so here we go. So since December, right here, we have the this this right here since December. We have nothing but up since December, nothing but up. And the price is down. We were up, it's been nothing but down since then. So anyway, really for longer than that, we've had, I guess, yeah, since December, like I guess right here is, right here is where I should be going. So since December, it's been three months of up and then the price has been three months of down. So bullish divergence, what I wanted to show there, And then, so I thought that was interesting. We, we can look at that uh, with other stocks as well. I thought that was interesting. And then, I have so many windows, it's driving me crazy, sorry. <laughs> no more using this multiple program thing. This is what I, okay. So then on stock twits, uh, I've got so many people blocked on stock twits. The last, when every, time, every time there's a short campaign, I get so much hate. So there's another campaign, so I blocked so many people, but this person seemed, this person, so yesterday I was saying, look at uh, Anavex's release for Parkinson's, A, uh, A, ANX, whatever it was, AVX 273. So 273, and the said, now, now this is, this these SR1 agonists, there's also Denepazil's also an SR1 agonist. So this person's saying, you can't compare uh, 273 to the other SR1 agonists. So let's give them their due here. Hey, Joe, maybe a little more research on S1R. There's only 100 papers on what it does. Trying to tie it to other S1R agonists does not work. 273 has a weak affinity to the receptor, then moves on to antagonize the mus muscarinic system. This dual action has shown anti-inflammatory, neuroprotective, and restoration of neuroplasticity. Cassava is light years behind. It will probably not be effective in the long run because it's not fixing the root cause of disease. Good luck. All right, well, so the, what, I, what I wanted to put out there was the muscarinic system. Okay, so you'd say the, the big idea is they're saying you cannot tie it to other S1R agonists. So it has a weak affinity to that to the, uh, receptor. Then it moves on to antagonize the muscarinic system. That dual method of action, anti-inflammatory, neuroprotective, restoration of neuroplasticity. However, so from the Journal of Alzheimer's, uh, these results show that denepazil acutely increases the brain AA signal that is mediated by ACH acting, acting as muscarinic receptors. So denepazil is acting with these muscarinic, uh, system, muscarinic system as well, is, is what I wanted to uh, push back on. So that's what I want to put back, push back on. That's it. And with that, Tendies Friendies, let's go back to this. Something good to look at. And with that, Tendies Friendies, oh, let's go to the phones. Let's go to the phones. Bongo Man ABC says, yeah, <laughs> I like it. Thank you. Chad says, I've been listening to your channel for a while now, and I really appreciate the information that you condense into these sessions. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Chad. I feel I, that's, that's funny you just said that nice, nice compliment. I feel like I got a little lost on that last segment there, and I, and I got to do a do a better job on it. <laughs> but I'll get I'll, I'll get the show better and better. Thank you, Joe is the man. Thank you, my friend. Daily Mix Super Joe to the rescue. Thank you, my friend. Max Payne at forty fifty. Yes, I actually got that up here as well. Thank you. I'm about to bring that up. Max Payne is now at forty fifty for the for this Friday, so still a couple bucks to go, a few before bucks to go. So money market makers got a little more pumping to do the rest of the week. Yeah, they do. Let 
rest of the week. Shorts should move to oil companies since they got only 9,000 permits to, dr to drill here at home. Coffee, creamer, and Bick and the rest of the nerd evil gang. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, uh, Dr. Bick is back. Elizabeth Bick is back. A lot of the, the, the whole Twitter FUD crew attacked all at once again. Uh, Adam Furstein uh, tweeted my uh, video that uh, Truthful Hand helped me make of the uh, testimonials. And all I can say is thank you. Thank you for, for the exposure. I really appreciate it. I hope that help, it helps uh, get the trials enrolled. And hopefully you think that too. I, that maybe you actually are trying to help secretly. You feel bad. Who knows? I got tempted to load more when it was 3250. So I did it savagely. Good for you, Daily Mix. Good for you, Daily Mix. Good for you, buddy. It's so hard when it's scary, right? But the, the, the relief comes and you never know. And this time it looks like it was China. John Daly, Twitter now has a downvote option on replies to tweets. Might be useful in responding to the trolls. Don't know how useful it will be, but you can be sure I'll be downvoting the Fudsters. Great. Awesome. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. I, I, you know, I, I don't know why it was like a revelation to me that you can ban people or block people. I, I don't like I don't like the uh, I don't like people you know just just doing blatant personal attacks for no reason at all. Like if somebody's like arguing with me about the the chemistry, fine. But it just there's a but some people just you know just just hateful stuff. So it's like oh I can I can block them and I have to okay. So I don't I was always like all right I'll just never look at the comments again. No way you can you can just block these people and keep looking. Oh, okay that's cool. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think of that. Thank you, John. Daily Joe, I got to like addiction to, on your channel on everything. I need to go to Cassava Savage Therapy. <laughs> Thank you, Daily Mix. I really appreciate you being here from the beginning, my friend. Thanks so much, my friend. Daily, Twitter is a joke. Bots and propaganda only. That's why I don't use none of that BS. Yeah. Uh, Jack Dorsey left because he like basically wasn't in control anymore. It's uh... <laughs> Social media is really something. It's on one hand, it's so great. On the other hand, oh my goodness. Jay, hi, Joe. I think Remy should be aggressive when it comes to dealing with the lies of the shorts. So I think he should release any new data info prior to his upcoming appearance. What do you think? I agree with the uh, clause or addendum <laughs> that uh, the qualification that uh, I, th I think we should have City University of New York clearance first. And then, and then uh, do a release. I do fear a little bit that uh, it's the, the, the. It was a good presentation they just released with a good update, but uh, he, he may or may not have anything new, new to add when he goes to his fireside chat. So it might not be a ton new to talk about, but uh, you know, that's, if that's the worst big deal, and then then City University of New York is right around the corner, one way or another. Daily Twitter is full of FUD, but also the quickest way to get new info. I know it's like social media. You hate it, but you need it and love it. <laughs> so, Netlist looking for word from court case. Yeah, uh, Jacob Braun did a great job of summarizing the conference call they just had. Uh, got a, a, so maybe I'll do that for tomorrow's show to, to go through that. Uh, so uh, thank you. So Miles says Netlist looking for word from court case with Google end of March, according to Hong during webcast. Yeah. Okay. Webcast yesterday. Yeah. Uh, apparently I, I actually didn't check it out yet. Apparently Hong did a great job on the webcast yesterday. So uh, we'll, uh, I'll, I'll check that out. Thank you very much. All righty, 3676 up 548. And this is on the day when they're raising rates, right? Go figure. Who knew? Who knew? And we can make it a quick one today. I'll, uh, I, I don't have a whole lot. But sometimes I have like four or five stories. Just had the one story today. But uh, tomorrow, maybe we'll get into. Uh, you know what? Maybe I can show. There's one other thing I can show. Well, and then here we got our Chang Yang. Not sure how Bic can be the good cop and say Joe was paid by Remy when she is probably being paid by Shorts. Guys, is she accusing me of being paid now? Joe has laid out his investment in Sava here in the past. What a joke. Great work, Joe. Thank you very much, my friend. Yeah, I didn't know. I knew she was back and creating FUD. I didn't know that, uh, that she was accusing me of being paid off again. I don't know that she ever did or not, but people have accused me of that. Not paid off. Never was. Just an investor and a concerned citizen and uh, the like. Never paid off at all in any way, shape, or form at all. At all. At all. And Solomon, my friend, Joe, it's been a while. Yes, it has. Good to see you, my friend. I've been hitting the mountains. Good for you, buddy. And clearing my head so the brain stays healthy. I can give my dues uh, anymore. Uh, did you take that option out? 
I can give my, oh yeah, uh, thanks for, thanks buddy, I appreciate it. Uh, Solomon wants to give a, uh, a tip. Yeah, I, uh, I have to get my AdSense. In order to get my AdSense, I have to have my local driver's license. <laughs> and I've got, so that's like, I gotta get the set set up. I gotta go uh, get my uh, stuff printed out so I can go to the DMV and get my uh, Florida driver's license so I can do my AdSense so I can get that set up. And then I wanna do simulcasting on Facebook and uh, TikTok if I can and, and Rumble. And, uh, and, and then do a bunch of stuff. So it's, and get the set together, a bunch of stuff and, uh, and go to the gym more and all that stuff. So, uh, and, and above a bunch of newsletter stuff, I got all, all sorts of things to do. So <laughs> thank you so much for asking, buddy. Yeah. Right now the options out cause of my, uh, cause my, I have to get my AdSense turned on again. Appreciate it. Thank you. She's accusing you of being paid by Sava. That was my first Twitter downvote. Thank you. Okay. Interesting. That's all they have. What else can they say? So I'm not paid by Saba at all and never was at all. And no sneaky way of getting around it. I'm sort of paid by somebody else or something like that. Never, ever, ever. I got paid by Seeking Alpha. Like anybody that submits articles of Seeking Alpha get, get paid by like the click or whatever it is for any article that they publish. So I got some money from Seeking Alpha. And unrelated, they don't, they, no one, they didn't say to me, write about uh, Sava. In fact, they gave me crap for writing about Sava. They, I wanted to do a newsletter with them because I was one of their top writers. And they were like, eh, all you ever do is write about Sava. Eh. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I did. But so never got compensated by Sava or anyone else to write about Sava at all. Just an investor and a shareholder. And that's it. That's it. That's all it ever was. And no sneaky way of getting around it or saying one thing. But sneakily, I was getting money from this other party that was sort of like, no, nothing like that at all, at all, ever, at all, ever. So there you go. Thank you very much, John. Tim, do you have any updates on share price prediction? Will there be a partnership or a buyout? Yeah, I think the share price can keep running. Eventually, these shares that are printed have to be called the task one way or another. Uh, Remy talked about uh, cash infusion and uh, alluded to buyout or to a uh, partnership. And this is coming up on like, I don't know, it's like, was this like August or something or November or something like that? It's been a while now. It's been months. And but then there's all this flood. There's a SUNY investigation. So it could be eventually this stuff comes out. Could be we get a cash infusion upfront, my, uh, upfront payment. Remy could, with those retained earnings, could do a cash dividend. We could also do a preferred share. Uh, on the blockchain or an NFT on the blockchain to uh, uh, get publicity for the trials. So there's ways to, to, to call those shares into, into, to, to, into account so they can, they can create all those phantom shares. But if Remy did, if there was a, let's say that, uh, let's say things go well, and I think they will, and the data comes in really well. Well, we saw that like uh, Lilly jumped $20 billion twice on its crap monoclonal antibody Alzheimer's data. So let's just say this is a 20 billion, let's just say it goes to 10 billion or even 5 billion. And let's say the market collapse 5 billion and they get $1 billion worth of, uh, of cash up front, which is low. Then they could do, they could pay out $400 million, pay out $10, $10 a share in, uh, in cash. And that $400 million uh, could, if it was, if there really is like, instead of 40 million shares, like 400 million shares, that $400 million could become $4 billion for cassava shareholders. That's something that Mr. Barbier could do. And they, they could do that. So the, sooner or later, those shares have to be called to account. So the, the valuation can get a lot better in a hurry. And I think it will. I don't, I don't know what the timeline will be, but there's so many good catalysts. Uh, I, I partnership, I think partnerships because of what he alluded to in November or whenever it was, August through November, <laughs> so I can't remember when it was. Uh, but he uh, he alluded to uh, cash infusions, huge cash infusions. It's, it, it, it sounded a lot like partnership. I can't remember exactly what he said, but yeah. Joe, early April call to Remy. Yeah, apparently he's speaking again. And he chose to do it with Maxim instead of with, uh, well, now Maxim has a price target of 125 on Sava or something like that. Well, I got a price target of like $2,800 on Sava. So where am I? <laughs> no, uh, but yeah, we'll invite Mr. Barbier back. I think once the City University of New York announces their findings, then I'll invite him again. So we'll see what he says. Dale, I saw in a video that the City University of New York will be working with Ori in release. 
College Research Governing Group. How dare you? R. Wood, Wood W. Joe, can you recommend a good shampoo, sir? Now, this is more hurtful than you might know. I used to have like wavy, curly hair down to my shoulders, and I was a philosophy major, and I had girls who didn't know me date me for my hair. And that's obviously not happening anymore, is it? But you go ahead and say things like that, mister. You got uh, probably a full head of hair. So uh, easy for you to say, sir. Easy for you to say, sir. I, I'm not totally naturally bald, but I'm definitely, I've been for a while at the point of, I've got like uh, the makings of a bald spot and definitely receding. So I can't do a good head of hair. I'm not totally bald, but I can't do a good head of hair either, so. And that there's like no way I can, like there's no halfway point that looks good for me. I hate everything in between, <laughs> so. I got like a wild head of hair that looks pretty cool if it's long, but it doesn't look good at all if it's medium, so. NFT, great idea, yeah. I mean, it, and it would, it would, it would, uh, Now, Lion says, I'm looking to make millions on cassava, but I've seen your comments, Lion. And are you Lion? Man, your comments accuse me of uh, being at a con man, I believe, and things like that. So maybe you're, this is your building up, uh, trying, to, trying to smooth talk us so you can pull the rug out. But let me, let me do one more thing here. So we'll tell you, I was going to do this for tomorrow, but this is from Lucy Commissar. And this is on game, this is GameStop. So as far as the market maker exemption uh, and the, creating the phantom shares as many as they want to at any time they want to. So we've had more volume buying, but the share price has been going down. Well, what if there's no uh, shares to short? Uh, well, they can keep making as many shares as they want. There's no concept of, of no shares to short. They can make as many as they want. How do they do that? Well, Lucy Commissar in the American Prospect goes into it here. First, the options market maker sells the prime broker a naked short that never settles from the market maker. This is the most important leg of the trade. The market maker also sells a put option, an option to buy a stock in the future, to the broker. This gives the market maker a neutral position, but the broker can maintain a long position as if they owned the stock. The broker can now lend that stock out to multiple clients. In this way, the prime broker and the market maker are creating fake lendable shares out of thin air. The end result is organized counterfeiting of shares in the market. Regulators aren't providing enough transparency to ferret it out. Regulators tell us there are fails, but don't tell us who did the fails. Liquor stores are being robbed, but they don't tell us who robbed the stores. There is voluminous evidence from the overstock case of Goldman Sachs. They were a prime broker. This is what all the prime brokers do, seemingly. They all have the market maker exemption. In Goldman Sachs engaging in this practice, including an email from a broker conceding that such conversion trades, quote, create inventory to allow customers to short, unquote. When Overstock got the incriminating evidence after Goldman's lawyer posted it by mistake on Pacer, we went over this, remember, go back and watch all the Lucy Comistar stuff. She's a wonderful investigative journalist. And we uncovered, a, a, she uncovered a treasure trove of stuff that we went through around that time period. This guy, this bastard of a lawyer who, the, the first thing we learned about him, this guy said the first time I ever met him, I think it was Patrick Burns saying the first time I ever met him, uh, I was standing behind him and, and another, another lawyer just said, hey, I just served your client. She was breastfeeding her baby for the first time and I gave her the, pa the papers that we sued her. And he's like, oh, that's wonderful. So uh, that was that moron that did that, that said that, submitted submitted uh, the biggest blunder in Wall Street history, submitting these Goldman Sachs unredacted documents onto this public system, showing all this stuff, all this incriminating stuff that Goldman did. And the like, creating these shares out of thin air, knowing that in, in intentionally doing fails to deliver. 
And so we went over all this stuff. And then the fact we're about to see here that they got fined $20 million. Well, they were, we know uh, just by uh, Mark Cajotes alone, it was in his interview with Lucy Comisar said he was paying Goldman Sachs. Je- Goldman Sachs didn't have all of his business, but him alone, that one hedge fund manager that was paying Goldman Sachs, who didn't have all of his business alone, more than a hundred million dollars a year in shorting fees on a big year. Uh, <laughs> so, and then they got fined only $20 million. So when Overstock got the incriminating evidence after Goldman's lawyer posted it by mistake on Pacer, the federal court online filing system, Goldman settled with Overstock in 2015 for $20 million. So, Tim Kirk, thank you for all the info. Why is a City University of New York investigation important? They are not FDA or SEC. Well, on one hand, you're right, and on the other, and 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 also, who cares if the mechanism of action, mechanism of action is totally misunderstood or wrong? It doesn't matter if this if the drug is safe and effective. That's what matters. So you're right. On one hand, it doesn't matter. On the other hand, people have accused Sava of being a fraud. They've accused them of every single thing they possibly could. This should be there. If there's any, if there's any, and there's should just be no uh, credibility to any of their claims at all. This should clear them if from from if there is anybody listening to these fraudulent claims. That should clear them. And unfortunately, it's not anybody paying attention that's listening to these fraudulent claims. It's people being scared away from the trials that don't know all the details that haven't looked into it. They just know the FUD and have said, oh, the FUD. And we know of a site, at least one site, that didn't run the trials because of all the FUD around it. The FUD had succeeded. In, and even in this one board member said, I, I wanted to run the trials, but we voted against it because of all the FUD. Uh, so so it'll, for the, it'll, it'll help clear. So the, the FUD, it's important to clear the FUD. So it'll, it should help do that. Joe, the guy that makes fun of my hair, what is the likelihood of a cash buyout? Seems like this would stick us with whatever the agreed share price is. I want to ride Sav as high as it will go. Well, considering that we have the, the partnerships, maybe they'll stay solo and, and just have the partners market the drug and they can continue to, uh, to, to develop it in other indications, develop other compounds like it because they have the uh, composition of matter on semiphilam and compounds like it. Very, the, not, not everything like it, but some things like it. Uh, specifically, they have, they have it and, and whatever else about it. It can, it can be in other forms. So not just semiphilam, but other things like it. Uh, so they, they could they could do other indications. So then they could they could just develop other. They have Savadex. They could just develop something completely different. Uh, so the and you're right. The, uh, the partnership and staying uh, staying solo does leave the much higher upside. So maybe they'll do that. Maybe they'll do that. Maybe ride right as high as it'll go. Quezzy, always good to see your face, Joe Loke. Quezzy, always great to see your name, my friend. I wish I could see your face, my friend. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. You're always so positive. I really appreciate it, my friend. Thank you. Uh, and please hit like. Please hit like. Quezzy liked. Quezzy liked. Why can't you like? <laughs> Thank you. R. Changang, Joe, any thoughts on Sarah Bloom Raskin's nomination being pulled? I'm actually not familiar. Uh, what? I'm, I'm not. I'm not. Where, where was she? I'm, I'm actually not familiar with what she was nominated for. If they weren't back to the uptick rule, would that ever, would that ever any of this garbage? That, and, and this garbage, I don't know. If they put the uptick rule back, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Went back. I don't know. Maybe. Or text data, what's shorting look like? Uh, last I shared, saw share shorting was like 36%, something like that. I don't have it up. I'm not going to go grab it. How's the rest of the market holding up? The Russell, all the small caps are up more than 5% now. So cassava at 5.6% up, all the small caps 5.03% up. All the small biotechs up 2.92%. So quite a day. Thank you for the likes, guys. Thank you very much. The algorithm likes likes. Thanks a lot. 
GameStop, Roblox, Immune Bio, and Anavex all higher than Cassava. Anavex up 6.39, GameStop 7.66, Roblox 8.50, and Immune Bio up 10.44%. China up 15.15%. How do you like that? Uh, actually, Jake, sorry. I'll have it for next time, Jake. The Ortex data, it's a really good idea. I'll bring that up. Sorry to... I, I hate searching for stuff while we're... At, like, I like having stuff up and not searching for it while we're talking here. So I'll have it up for next time. Very good idea. Thank you very much, Jake. I appreciate it. Mads has been away visiting LA back in Denmark. Good to see you again. They don't have the internet in Los Angeles. Glad we are all hanging out here in difficult times. Well... Yeah, I'm glad you're back in Denmark, I guess, if that's safe from Putin. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, well, I guess in L.A. you got good, better weather than Denmark this type of year, type of year, time of year. Uh, anyway, so yeah, I, I was going to insult California, but I guess I won't. <laughs> I'm glad you're uh, doing okay, Mads. Great to see you back again. Thank you, my friend. Art Shangang, she was supposed to be the Fed. Oh, second to Powell. Huh. And then why, uh, why was, I, I, I'm not, I don't, I don't know why, why she was pulled. I'm not sure. I wasn't, I don't know. I'll have to look into that. I'm not sure. I mean, it seems that all that stuff is political now. So, or maybe it always was, who knows, but it seems like everything always was political. It's just easier to, like, it's more like with, in the internet and everything, it's just it's just easier to be more dangerous <laughs> when you're political or something. All right. Uh, gra guys, great to see you. Uh, thanks so much for being here. Uh, good stuff looking at that OBV. Great day in the market as we send off cassava up 5.6%. Way to go. Tomorrow, uh, we'll have good stuff. I don't know, maybe we'll do the... Uh, maybe we'll do the uh, the thing about doing the math for finding how many shares they printed, you can do that and then finding the number of fails to deliver, but you have to find a certain terminal point, which I guess you can do, but you have to go back historically and do it, but which maybe I'll do. I got I saw somebody do it with GameStop. Maybe I'll check out that example and then see if I can do it with, uh, with Cassava. So maybe I'll see if I can get that for tomorrow. Uh, sign up for the free newsletter. Uh, that other stock I wanted to recommend was up so much yesterday, up again today. And I never, I didn't send it out because I was waiting for it to be down. <laughs> so I'll send it out either way. It's, a, it's still a really good stock. It should print quarter after quarter. So it uh, should be good. So it's, it's a great company at a good value, sort of like Elders, which is still doing great. So sign up for that stuff. Great to see you. See you tomorrow. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.